Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good day. So today we're talking about uh, processes and process selection, uh, systematic process selection. So you've uh, refreshed back that you've already gone through the material selection strategy. Okay, you've understand that uh, the importance of uh, starting with uh, translating the design requirements. Okay, expressing functions, the constraints, the objective and free variables, right? Okay? From the information that's given to us regardless from the design or from the requirements of market study, uh, survey, questionnaires and everything. Next, uh, we screened the materials based on the constraints, uh, limiting materials that cannot do the job. Okay, and then next we rank the objectives. Okay, first uh, finding the screen materials, finding the job uh, materials that can do the job best, and then seeking documentation. Okay, researching family history of the top uh, candidates, and then finally we come to the final material choice. Okay, either a singular choice or uh, a, a range of choices that we can have based on, the, uh, uh, and then that we can have uh, much more option. Okay, so these are the basics uh, you've uh, gone through. Okay. So, we also need to apply this to, uh, we also need to apply this to the process selection, okay, also, the process selection also uh, uses the same principles, okay, and the strategy, of course, uh, parallels with that, that when we select the materials, we start with the translation, the design requirements, the materials that we uh, decided upon, uh, the function that we need, what are the uh, tolerances or uh, functions that we need is it requires assembly and everything and then we screen what are the processes that cannot uh, meet the requirements based on the constraints uh, we rank them okay based on the objective with documentation and, the, and then with the final process choice hmm. Okay, so the uh, so the, this is the process material matrix. And so this is the process material matrix. So uh, matrix here you can see uh, it it classifies what mat, mat, uh, what materials get that can be uh, used for what process that can conform to uh, that that process that can conform using the, that that specific material. For example, metals. Okay. You can have the option of sand casting, uh, ferrous metal, investment casting, forging, uh, sheet forming, uh, powder methods, electro machining, and conventional machining. But you can't use extrusion or low pressure casting or die casting because of its uh, limitation of the of the material itself. Uh, for non-ferrous metals, you have the all of the options available that uh, even inclusive of the one available for met ferrous metal. Okay, and for ceramics, you can do for powder methods, uh, electro machining, and everything. But you can't use injection molding or blow molding and so on and so forth. So this is the, the, the first uh, part of the chart shows the matrix for shaping. And then the, the second part is for joining, which is the what are the processes that, that can be used for what kind of materials for joining. Okay, for uh, uh, for example, welding only limited for metals for ferrous and non-ferrous, but not for uh, non uh, not for non-metallic materials such as ceramics, elastomers, or even composites. Okay. But we have we do have welding specific welding for polymers. Okay, we'll talk about it later. And then uh, we have fasteners, which is all the materials can be used, and also adhesive can conform all of the materials. For finishing, okay, certain materials are not able to uh, to use for certain, like for example, precision machining, ceramics or glasses because they are brittle materials. So it is uh, very difficult to uh, you you end up end up machining uh, uh, often uh, to because the material is not. You know, is the surface starts to harden uh, I mean too hard and then the tool material itself so it can't be uh, precisely machined okay and it'll, it'll uh, even have more because of its uh, brittle nature it'll crack more compared to it doesn't have uh, some ductility for it to deform okay uh, for grinding okay uh, on, uh, but for elastomers and thermal uh, polymers are not able to to process uh, for finishing okay and for shape Okay, if you can see the shape rather than the material itself, so what are the shapes that can be produced based on the on the uh, um, uh, processes that are available? 
for example you have metals metal shaping here if you want to do circular non-circular so you have uh, these are the processes that are available okay according to which material okay so for example if you want a polymer within a flat so you can't use of course and casting and everything so you can use either in blow molding the, the, the flat polymer uh, sheet you can ship it uh, to uh, in, in using a compression molding you can use uh, for dish shape you can use blow molding or even thermal forming and uh, and also rotational molding okay so this ref refers to uh, materials process and also inclusive of the shape that you want to produce next is uh, range what are the uh, mass range specifically what are the processes that can meet uh, the range of mass of uh, certain materials and what are the uh, uh, the process that can that, that can that can able to handle that for example uh, uh, if you want to uh, have uh, metal for example that about less than one micron okay less than one micron uh, of one uh, about one gram uh, less than one gram uh, so so uh, conventional machining is the best way because it, it can it is more uh, it's able to meet that that small uh, piece of material okay but for for example forging it will be almost impossible because of its really really small uh, size and everything so it's not that's the limit is only about 0.1 kilogram it's about 100 grams so uh, and then even for for example for blow molding okay uh, for polymer the range is about uh, uh, less than about maybe about uh, 80 grams here okay up until uh, up until maybe about 500 grams okay so that is the more you even can you can handle about uh, about one kilograms or, or more than the, the the material because it's not it's not possible to uh, because the, the, the nature of the material itself uh, polymer is very low density if you're asking about one kilogram of polymers so uh, i mean having a sheet you have to it's not a more it's not longer no longer a thin sheet it will be a thicker so it will be almost a block of metals uh, a block of polymer so then the blow mold is not suitable for for it okay so and then for joining okay these are the processes that that uh, the what are the limitation of range of the mass that you can do for adhesive up until about uh, i think about 800 grams uh, uh, 800 kilograms okay sorry uh, no no uh, 80 kilograms uh, and then for welding of metals up until uh, 10,000 uh, uh, kilograms uh, polymers uh, limited to until about uh, around maybe 200 kilograms for fasten fasteners from the uh, it started off from uh, the lowest less than about 10, 10 grams up until uh, 10,000 kilograms you can be for example those uh, you uh, if you know for example like uh, aeroplanes okay most of it are uh, assembled joined together with uh, rivets with uh, fasteners that, that that can withhold uh, uh, i mean that amount of stress uh, that amount of uh, load that is being carried out and for section this is for matrix for the uh, limitation of the section thickness according to the processes and the material Okay, for uh, metal, for example, casting. Okay, you can the lowest section thickness you can get is about uh, it's about seventy, uh, it's about seven mm. That's the lowest thickness that you can meet. You can go a uh, uh, range more low, lower than that for sand casting. You can go higher than that, maybe about one meter in the in thickness. Okay, uh, but for for rotational molding, it's only a very uh, limited range. It only can start uh, around about four. Uh, millimeter until about nine millimeters okay so very uh, very limited range so this uh, so you have to choose which processes according to the section techniques that you want okay and also the material so uh, metals or up until only conventional machining uh, for ceramic is only up until from powder to injection so you can use other like vacuum bagging and everything okay so this is this chart next shows how you decide how much what are the, the requirement the thickness requirement to the processes that are available next is tolerance okay as you know uh, sand casting for example on the top here is it has very poor tolerances so uh, the, the tolerance about one mm until about five millimeters so the range of tolerance is very high as compared to for example electro machining if you want something more precise then you can op op uh, have the option of uh, of going for 0.0, .0 uh, 
about 0.0, I think 0.02 here millimeters up until 0.1 millimeters. So about uh, about uh, 100 microns up until 10 microns uh, uh, tolerance. So oh, actually, you can combine actually. Uh, if you if, if the process requires first uh, for the primary shape, you can use sand casting. And for the finishing, you can uh, for the uh, secondary process, you can do electro machining to get the, the parts more precise. Okay, uh, more precise tolerance also. So uh, it's not necessarily you have to. Uh, the process has to be a singular chosen process, but it can be a, a combination of process to get the desired uh, requirement that you want. And for finishing, okay, of course, finishing itself, uh, you have precision machining, which is very uh, range high uh, tolerance range, tolerance range, excuse me, you can have uh, less than about 10 micron up until uh, one millimeter. Okay, for polishing, it's very, very, uh, very small uh, removing process, so less than uh, 100 micron, less than 10 microns of materials only removed, the uh, thickness uh, that is removed, so it can vary, very, uh, if you want to uh, adjust it according to uh, uh, the desired uh, dimension that you want, so uh, uh, just uh, incrementally, so you can use uh, polishing. So this is an example on how uh, the process selection method will be using. Okay, so an example here is a company ANA. It's a manufacturer of plastic bottles in Malacca. Okay, and this is the figure. Okay, uh, in general, plastic bottles are used to contain various fluids such as milk and engine oil. And Mr. Abu, a technical manager for this company, is being assigned to enhance the production yield for every month. He has to produce the batches of more than one million bottles per month. So a typical polyethylene bottle weighs about 30 grams and has a wall thickness of 0.8 millimeters with tolerance of 1 mm. And the shape is 3D hollow with a surface roughness about 0.6 micron. Okay. So there are two uh, methods that we can use. We can start with uh, using the charts, the matrix that I've shown previously, or you can use the, the CS software. So if we start with the, of course, initially we have to start with translation of the, of the process, uh, of the information that we got from the text previously. So the function is you have to manufacture plastic bottles. The constraints that we have a range of mass is about 30 grams of the polyethylene bottle. The section 3 is about 0.8 millimeters. The tolerance is about 1 millimeter. You have to make the shape of 3D hollow with the plastic bottles. And the surface roughness is about 0.6 micrometers. The objective is that we have to produce more than 1 million plastic bottles per batch. And you have to minimize uh, cost, which is the most economical. And for of course, the choice of process for polymer. So because it's a polyethylene bottle, plastic bottle manufacturer, manufacturer so you have, you're have limited to only the any kind of uh, process for polymers. Okay. So of course, uh, then we can, uh, automatically you have to eliminate uh, met, uh, metal processes or even ceramic processes or even composite processes. So, so the process for polymers that uh, because polyethylene is a thermoplastic. Okay. So automatically, so these are the limited uh, process that we have. We have conventional machining, injection molding, blow molding, compression molding, rotational molding, thermoforming, polymer casting, resin transfer molding. Okay, these are the processes that are available. Okay, uh, for thermoplastic, other processes are not. Uh, so between these, uh, about eight processes that can be chosen. So uh, the shape that we want is a 3D hollow shape. So if 3D hollow shape, so then for polymers, so you only left with, uh, you, know, you see here polymer. So if it's a 3D hollow, you're only limited to conventional machining, uh, injection molding and blow molding. Or you can either choose a compression molding, even polymer casting and even resin transfer molding. So from the eight there, we're only left now with about six processes that are available. Next for mass ranges. So mass range is about 30 grams. So 30 grams in the range is about here. Okay. So you can see here, blow molding meets it. Injection molding also meets the requirement. Uh, thermal forming also meets the requirement and also polymer casting. Okay, so one from eight to six to four. Okay, uh, the mass range. Next, what about section thickness? Section thickness just now we know that it's about uh, 0.8 millimeters. So we have uh, for polymer uh, about injection molding, blow molding meets requirement also for thermal forming. So we have from eight, six to four, and now to three. These are the three processes that are available. So our final uh, the objective is that we. Uh, what about the, the economic batch size, which is uh, what are the, we started from 8, uh, 6, 4, and then 3. 
So then what are the processes that are available that can meet the requirements of more than one million batch size? So of course, uh, then we are left with, uh, if you, as you can see here, one million uh, batch size. So either injection molding or blow molding that is, is available. So uh, the thermal forming already shall be eliminated because it's only the maximum batch size about 10, uh, about 1,000 uh, units per batch size. So finally, we are left with two uh, final candidates, which is injection molding and blow molding. So this is an example on how we use the, the matrices, uh, the matrix of the charts that we use to, to solve the, 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 the problem. Okay, so next I'll be showing you how we can use the CS uh, Edupack software to go through the same uh, process, okay, the, uh, the process selection and how to determine the, the what are the, the process that are available, okay. Okay, so... Okay, so I already opened uh, CA certified software. So choosing uh, level two database. Okay, so uh, we straight away start with uh, selecting here the chart. So we choose the do level two shaping because we want to shape uh, the process. Uh, you don't have to use directly uh, the craft method. You can use the uh, limit is enough. So we can just key in uh, uh, information here. So we want the uh, a hollow 3D shape, uh, physical tribute. So we have, uh, if you remember, about uh, 30 grams. So you can put here minimum of 30 grams. Uh, it's about, it's good because it's in kilograms, so about 30 grams uh, minimum. Uh, the range of section thickness, sure you remember, it's about uh, 0.8. So you can put uh, uh, the range you either is in specifically from 0.2 to uh, up until uh, one uh, millimeters. Uh, tolerance minimum is uh, one millimeter. You can put here, and uh, the roughness. Okay, if you remember about uh, 0.6 micron, so you can put here about six uh, micron here. And process characteristics, you can put here as the primary uh, shaping process that we need. Economic attributes, you can put here a minimum of. 1 million batch size. Okay, so if when we click on apply, so also we get the final two uh, process uh, injection molding either in thermoplastic or thermal sets and low molding. So these are the this is the these are the process that are that can meet, even though we don't choose the material uh, specifically, but we know these are the processes that can meet the requirement. So as, as you seen just now, it's the same as the uh, what we did with the with the matrices, the graphs that we use. So we uh, even the machine, uh, even the CS effect also software also suggests those uh, processes. Hey, okay. So if you seen just now, so uh, even the CS effect software also suggests this uh, the final two process, which is injection molding and blow molding. So when we rank uh, a process cost, okay, we have uh, four common rules, sense rules that we that we can that the engineer engineer or designer should bear in mind. First is that we have to keep things in standard, meaning that it's cheaper design to be made from a standard stock, from uh, rather than non-standard shape, and this will reduce the cost and range of tooling, the manufacturing, is and help with recycling. So for example, just now uh, the just now that we are talking about the, the plastic manufacturer, bottle plastic manufacturer, so. Uh, even though uh, it's suggested two process blow molding and, uh, and injection molding so uh, and both and both process can meet all the requirements that we have but considering that that it's it's already it's a plastic bottom manufacturer it's already has machine for example a blow molding machine so either their machines the current machine cannot meet the production yield that they want so they have to invest in a newer uh, more uh, a better uh, much more uh, uh, higher yielding for uh, uh, 
injection uh, blow molding machine so it's bad if they want to invest in the injection molding machine then they have to invest in not only the capital the retraining or rehire of hiring or newer uh, staff that are more familiar with the process uh, instead of the, the, uh, if they choose for blow molding uh, their staff already familiar with the, the basic principle of process it's just they have to train with just a new uh, machine itself so their 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 factory setup is already ready for a blow molding process so it's better they use uh, blow molding so those kind of information that we that we have to consider uh, in, in in the final decision and uh, next is keep thing, keeping things simple so if a part need to be machine it have to be clamped uh, clamping itself, uh, yeah, if the more complex, then you have to change the 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 the, the orientation of the uh, of the workpiece. So you, and you have to uh, you have to again set for alignment. Uh, and three, uh, make the parts easy to assemble. So assembly takes time and money. Uh, designing for uh, design for manufacturing assembly addresses this problem with set common sense criteria. The first is we have to minimize part count. Designing parts that can be self aligned on assembly. Uh, from uh, most often circular parts do not require some aligning, so they uh, can easily be, be be fit to assemble, and use only methods that are fast. For example, snap fit or spot weld. And lastly, we do not specify performance more than is needed. Uh, high strain metals can uh, have uh, e, uh, can uh, that we want uh, to have its uh, higher properties. It has to have higher expensive additions. Uh, and then for high performance polymers, you have to be chemically more complex. Uh, and all of this increases the material cost. The, the tolerance, roughness, or uh, cost even rises exponentially when we demand for uh, 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 a process that, that needs a very high precision and good surface finish. So this kind of performance costs money. So when talking about economic batch size, so the economic batch size is commonly cited for processors and it's an easy way to introduce economy into the selection to rank candidate process by economic batch size and retain those that are economic in the range that you want as, as what we use in the example, uh, last example just now. So this is a, the chart that we use uh, to uh, deciding what are the range of the, of the batch size uh, for the economic uh, uh, for uh, for processes, what are the minimum and then maximum uh, batch size that is makes it more economical? So, for example, here sand casting, the range we have up until uh, one, you can produce one uh, unit from uh, sand casting up until a thousand. So, if you want to go higher, more than the, a thousand uh, units for sand casting, so it's not economical. You have to have a lot of uh, mold. You have to have, uh, and then the the the, the time even up until even at one thousand is almost uh, is is almost uh, uh, not economical itself because uh, the the way the, the process of uh, casting itself okay and then how much uh, even liquid metal that you need and for another example is for uh, blow molding okay if you want to use just one unit producing so it doesn't make any sense to use a blow molding process. Okay, because blow molding process, it can uh, a batch is uh, it can uh, generate up to uh, uh, up to hundred thousands of units per batch uh, run. So it won't be economical just to make a few uh, limited run up of bottles. So because of the amount of, of the the cost of designing the the mold itself to be machined, so, so uh, all these things we have to take into consideration. So the economic economic criteria for selection, so. Early on, for the lower, the more, the lowest number of components that you have, the tooling cost dominates because the tooling itself to make is already, uh, uh is very, uh, it's very high for to make to produce the, the tooling cost. But as you go higher, okay, as you go higher up until uh, a million, uh, units, so, so then the, 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 the material and time cost dominate. So how how much time is being used to, to produce. So this is only the, the control dimension. So because the tools can be used for uh, high yield. So then uh, it, 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 uh, at, a, at a point of about uh, 10,000 uh, units. So it'll, it'll be, it, it'll be uh, it will work out itself. Okay. So the difference is, is shown here, for example, for compression and injection molding. So you see here uh, for Injection molding, okay, up to ten thousand. The cost of uh, relative cost per equipment per component itself uh, almost the same. 
Well, if you go higher, then the compression molding is uh, is more expensive compared to uh, injection molding. So how do we use cost modeling? So the manufacture of component consumes resources, uh, for example, in figure one here, each of these has an associated cost. And the final cost is the sum expenses of all resources it consumes in table one. So uh, the product itself, the manufacturing product that, that we need, so the cost of the material, the capital, time, energy, all the information searching, even the waste materials that we, we use to, to get the product are into consideration. So the, uh, for materials, the cost of materials, uh, including the symbols, is CM, uh, uh, the unit is dollar per kilogram. The capital cost of tooling is CT, and for equipment is CE, uh, the unit is in dollar. Time is the overhead rate, uh, including labor, administration, rent of the building. So it's the unit is the symbol is COH overhead and dollar per hour is the unit. Energy, the cost of energy, C E uh, E small is about dollar per hour, and information the R and D or relative payments that we need is CI and dollar per year that we have to pay. So the cost model. The cost model is think of now of the manufacture of component, okay, uh, with weighing of M kilogram. Made of a material consisting the cost is about, do, uh, about uh, cm dollar per kilogram. So the first contribution to the unit cost is m cm. Okay, magnify the factor of one over one one over f. F is the scrap fraction, uh, which is the fraction of the starting material that ends up in the sprues, rises, or turning or other waste rejects. Okay, so this is the basic equation for uh, for the uh, material cost model. And the tooling cost is the set of tooling dies, molds, uh, fixture, and jays, and is what called a dedicated force. And one that must be wholly assigned to the production run to this of this single component, and it's written off against the normal size of the production run. And tooling wears out if the run is a long one, replacement will be necessary. So the tooling cost per unit is the form of the C tooling over N, which is the number of, uh, of uh, production run. INT is the integer function for N number of production run. NT is the number of units that the set of tooling can make before it has to be replaced. Okay, so for example, that that tooling can make about ten thousand. Uh, unit so that is the the factor we have plus 0.41 which is the the uh, the factor that we have to uh, consider and this is the equation and uh, for uh, for cost of uh, capital cost of equipment which is cc is uh, rarely dedicated so a given piece of equipment uh, for example a powder press for example can be used to make uh, many different components by installing different die sets or to or tooling so it's usual to convert the capital cost of non-dedicated dedicated equipment and the cost of borrowing the capital itself to an overhead by dividing with the capital write-off uh, times two which is the uh, five years for example and the quantity cc over T W O is then a cost per hour provided the equipment is used continuously. So that is really the case. So the term is modified by dividing it by a load factor, uh, which is the fraction of time for which the equipment is productive. So the cost per unit for the capital cost of equipment is then hourly cost divided by the rate at which the units are produced. So it's a one over n with the number of production run, uh, and then times by the uh, capital cost over L, which is the fraction of the time, the load factor, and T uh, W O is the capital write off. Okay, which is what we can see as the as the we purposely invest uh, uh, investing itself for the overhead cost of course is the overhead unit so it's the units per hour so it comes cost per when divided by the production rate with units per hour which is the n so the total shipping cost of the product of of a component is that first the material cost the tooling cost and the cost of equipment plus the overhead rate. So this is another example on how we use the cost for the uh, in the material. Okay, so I, if you remember again, uh, we talked about the uh, light stiff uh, cylindrical rod. So and also we found that the minimum indices for the uh, for the material is m is equals to uh, modulus of elasticity over rho. And if we were to consider the cost of material, then the material indices would need to be changed. So the total cost is c m times m, which is the material mass. So therefore, C equals to CM times AL rho, which is the uh, formula for mass. And since A is equals to force over stress, okay, 